Apologies for no sound during the first few seconds, but I've had to overlay this due to copyright on background music. This is the railhead we're copying, and we need to remove the 100 year old paint. We're using uh, an SDS DeWalt with a descaling attachment from Italy. This is how quickly it removes that paint. It's much, much, that there's no dust, it's much, much cleaner to use. And wire brushes, there's just dust and rubbish everywhere. This is a much more efficient way of doing it. After we've cleaned it up roughly with the descaler, we'll just pop it into the shop blasting cabinet and give it a proper clean. Is almost done now. It gets 99% of the rub rubbish off, but the the sandblaster, well, you'll see the difference in a minute, but it gets into this stage, which is very easy to clean from then on. If you're wondering where we get the cast iron from to melt down, basically the best method is go to the local garage and get second-hand discs. They'll give them to you for free and they're good quality cast. So what we do is if we cut up this top piece first, This is the, uh, the rail head that we cleaned up earlier. So now what we need to do is make a cast out of that using the casting sand. That's an oil bonded sand, which is easier to use. You've got, this bit's in two parts. So first of all, we'll take the nice flat part and we'll have to put some sand into that. railhead it's actually a parting line where you can see where they did this hundreds of years ago so what we're going to do is we're going to keep it the same see here we'll line up like this like so then I'm going to tap it down halfway a bit out here what I should have done definitely take that out so you want to sprinkle this with talcum powder and it prevents the sand from sticking on the part because we're going to need to remove this later if we come back down to the part line again so, so we'll tap it down halfway Press around there a little bit. Go. Right, there we go. So now I'm going to sprinkle because the second part that we put on, we don't want to stick into this sand because we need to get this out afterwards. So, a little sprinkle of talcum powder. Right. So now this one goes on top, like so. Then we pile on the sand. This needs to be pushed down hard because we're going to lift this off afterwards to remove the original part. So if I get a nice bit in there to start with.
for some reason the camera didn't operate but what I've basically done is I've tapped this I've lifted this one up like so I've taken the masterpiece out so now it's left with a void the same shape as this using a wood drill here I've drilled two holes to let the cast iron go in and out and then I've carefully place this back onto the mould. So now what's going to happen is the cast iron will go in here and out there. Usually we would melt down the cast while we're doing this to save time, but because it's a very noisy process, I decided to do this first so you'd be able to hear me. Alright, let's melt down the cast iron. cast iron here, I'm going to put the crucible in first, which is this, it's made out of graphite, and I'm carefully, because these crucibles are not particularly strong, so you can be very gentle with them, I'm going to put in two of the big bits, and a selection of smaller bits, that'll be fine, and then what we're going to do, Light it. After we light this, you're not really going to hear very much because it's very noisy, and then I'll do some recording again after it's been poured. Right, here we go. As a rough rule of thumb, if it's taken you half an hour to melt down the cast iron, I suggest you leave it in the sand for at least the same amount of time, so half an hour, preferably double if you've got time. If you take it out too quickly and heat it down too quickly, it becomes very brittle and it's likely to crack. If you pour water on it, it may even crack straight away. Um, if you leave it, it, it's still hard, but, but it's weldable um, with cast iron rods and it, it's great, it works fine. So just be patient and let it cool down. Bear in mind, this is very, very dangerous. If that crucible breaks, you need to be so careful to keep your body and feet away from where you're lifting it. Lift it as low as you possibly can. Don't lift it any higher than you absolutely have to to get it out of the furnace. Put it straight away, gently onto the floor and then pour it as I've shown you, putting it back in afterwards, because obviously it's also a fire hazard. Um, this isn't for playing with, you really need to be very, very careful or you could end up in serious trouble. Okay, I'll uh, be patient, I'll let that cool down and then I'll break it out and show you. Well, really this is sort of like Christmas you know this is what we're trying to copy and in there is the finished result again you know it, it's sort of should we find out okay it 
There it goes. Remember, it's still very, very hot, so just be careful. Be very careful. Get some more pliers. These welding gloves are really the bare minimum. I mean, they're very good for what they are, but be careful. So, <coughs> dear me. So, prior to clean up, that's the original and that's the copy. And there's the finished result. The original's in front with the talcum powder on it and the copy is behind. They've basically come out identical. Um, there you go. That's how you copy something um, and make it out of cast iron. Thanks for watching. Uh, please subscribe for more.